guys use the skills here so today we're going to go over internal storage for the playstation um i kind of went over this a little bit before but now that it's actually available and people are actually buying it and it, basically it actually exists now we can talk about it so uh number one thing um sorry i'm on ign <laughs> so the best ps5 ssd storage right now is the wd black sn850 and uh that's gonna run you let's see with the heatsink about 250 dollars um one terabyte without the heatsink uh, just the ssd is uh 170 or one, 165 whatever but you want to get it with the heatsink uh i'll explain what heatsink is i'll explain what ssds and all that stuff is and then of course the two terabyte is almost 500 dollars, so almost a whole P playstation 5 uh, uh, my recommendation is actually that you wait, um, you know, the 500 gigabyte one is not that bad, uh, well, it's pretty bad <laughs> it's, in price, but what I mean is, like, uh, it's, it's, if you need, uh, like, really, if you really need to expand your storage, your internal storage, then I would say, sure, get this one, because it's the cheapest one, and it'll at least give you another 500 gigabytes, but I would say, ultimately, is to wait until these prices drop like they get a little bit thing a little bit better there's other internal ssds um again these aren't the best sabrin's crucial p5 samsung uh seagate they're all very good they're just not as good as the uh western digital one so the western digital one on top of the fact that uh you know it, it runs all the stuff so basically it should hold on i'm gonna it, it's gonna go over and it's gonna explain what uh exactly you need for uh the basic specifications for the ssd so again the difference between an ssd an internal ssd is that it goes inside the playstation or inside the computer or whatever and then an external uh, hard drive or an external ssd uh like this one which is the best external ssd for the playstation 5 is that uh ultimately for the playstation 5 the big difference is external ssds can run PlayStation 4 games from them, but you cannot run PlayStation 5 games from them. You can save PlayStation 4 games on them and PlayStation 5 games on them, but when you want to run, like, play your actual PlayStation 5 games, you have to transfer it to the internal uh, memory of the PlayStation. So that's why it's better to get an internal SSD, because it works faster, it works better with the PlayStation, than the uh, external one if you want to play PlayStation 5 games. Now, in my opinion, it's not really necessary right now. That's why it's, I said to wait, because the external uh, one, if you have any external hard drive, not just this one, but this is the one that I would recommend if you're getting an external hard drive. Um, basically, it, it runs pretty well. It, uh, it it runs your games as basically as if it's f directly from your PlayStation. But I would only recommend this if you... Um, if you have a lot of PlayStation 4 games and not a lot of PlayStation 5 games. The reason I say that is because you can, again, run your PlayStation 4 games directly from an external hard drive, and it will run just as good as if it's running from your PlayStation. You don't have to basically download it from the hard drive and put it on your PlayStation. You can leave it on, to the, on the hard drive and play it from there, and it'll play just as good, external or internal. Um, now, for PlayStation 5 games, like I said, you can only run them from the internal SSD, the one that goes inside the PlayStation, unfortunately, and or the actual PlayStation memory storage that comes with the PlayStation. So that's the only uh, uh, drawback or, yeah, or I guess benefit of having the external one as opposed to the, ex uh, the external one. And obviously it does run faster and is better. But um, again, if you have PlayStation, and most people that I know have a lot of PlayStation 4 games because PlayStation 4 literally just the cycle for the PlayStation Store just ended and PlayStation 5 cycle just began. There's not a lot of PlayStation 5 games that have come out, like exclusively PlayStation 5 games. So, for example, if you have um, Ghost of Tsushima, if you have Horizon Zero Dawn, if you have uh, God of War, the first Spider-Man, all of these games, you can play them directly from the external hard drive if they're from PlayStation 4. If you've upgraded to the PlayStation 5 version, then you're going to need the internal hard drive or run them directly from your PlayStation, unfortunately. But not a lot of people have done that, is what I'm saying. So I still think this is far out because there's not that many games that are on the PlayStation 5 or specifically PlayStation 5 exclusive games that I feel like would have eaten up someone's memory by now. 
unless they play a really wide variety of games, which is very rare. But uh, yeah, so there's not a lot of shooters that are only PlayStation 5s, there's not a lot of RPGs that are only PlayStation 5s, there's not a lot of action adventure games that are only PlayStation 5s. Like, I can name maybe four or five actual PlayStation 5 titles that have come out that I think are big top tier titles that are not just upgrades from last year uh, from PlayStation 4s that uh, that might fill up your ex- uh, your PlayStation. Sorry, you can use this if most of your games that you're playing on your PlayStation 5 are PlayStation 5 games. Most of the games that you're saving on your PlayStation 5 on your memory are PlayStation 5 games. This is more beneficial for you. But if you mostly have PlayStation 4 games that you're playing on your PlayStation 5 or the saves are from PlayStation 4, you can use an external hard drive. Again, it doesn't have to be Western Digital. I'm just saying this is the best one that I would recommend. But you can use any external hard drive that can pair with the PlayStation. All right? Now, uh, let's see how to put the, the internal expansion slot on a software level. And the beta firmware users can now expand All right. the storage. However... The SSD needs to play by Sony's rules. The SSD should... So, the SSD, the internal um, memory for the PlayStation 5, has to be specifically this type of SSD. And so, right now, the best one that fits that parameter is the WD uh, Black SN 850. In fact, it even better because basically it says up to 7,000 uh, megabytes per second, and uh, Sony only requires it... Well, the minimum requirement is... Uh, 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. So it does run even faster than the recommended uh, speed for it. So it's even better. Um, anyway, obviously the the sizes and all of the stuff, this is specifically for the PlayStation 5, so definitely it fits. I just wanted to got, show you guys. I'm going to see if he shows you how to install it. Because uh, you can buy one, like I said, with the heat sink, without the heat sink. And... Uh, it, it, it all depends on you. Digital black most of the aforementioned reasons. All right. So, basically, uh, the Sony executive said this is the best one for the PlayStation. And, again, they're the ones that make the software so or the hardware. So, I assume they know. And uh, it's been tested by a bunch of reviewers. And it, it has been proven to be the best one so far. This is the video where it's going to show you how to basically upgrade your internal storage if you have one. And uh, the different um, heat sinks and stuff that you can probably get with it. So uh, the first video is from Game B- Gaming Bolt, in case you guys want to go check them out. And the second one is from John Glasscock, if you guys want to check him out. He has a lot so of videos. I want like to make this. this video to show you how to do it. Make sure to leave a like rating on this video for good luck. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need is a compatible M.2 SSD for your so he has the Western Digital and he has the Samsung one, which are both pretty good. But again, the Western Digital one is, in my opinion, the better one. It will be affiliate links, so if you want to help support the channel, you can purchase one using the link. Next, you're going to need a low-profile heat sink. Now, many SSDs like the WD Black SN850 actually come optioned with an SSD heat sink already in the box. But if you end up purchasing an SSD like the Samsung. Pro, right. Then you will need to purchase a separate heat sink to install in your PS5. Get this going. Pull down with your other hand, and it should gently slide off. Next, we're going to remove the SSD expansion slot cover. So this is where the SSD goes. Then remove the mounting screw. And do not forget about the spacer. Now we're going to unbox our SSD and install the heat sink. Now, I like this video because it shows you both. Uh, one that comes with the heatsink, and one that you basically have to attach a heatsink to in, in case you buy a separate heatsink. Now, you can buy the WD Black one without the heatsink and get a cheaper heatsink and just attach it to it, but uh, I would recommend getting the one with the heatsink that comes with it because it's already built for it. And you're already spending a bunch of money for it anyway. <laughs> Since every heat sink is built slightly different, I always recommend reading the instructions for your heat sink so you know how to properly attach it to your SSD. As you can see with the WD Black SN850, the heat sink already comes pre-attached, so there's no additional installation needed. But for SSDs like the Samsung 980 Pro, we're going to first install the thermal pads. So thermal pads come with the heat sink when you buy it. 
or with the SSD. Um, no, it should come with the heatsink. But either way, uh, the, the the thermal pads are basically like, like an adhesive, and it doesn't. It's like an adhesive that doesn't. Um, it doesn't get sticky. Well, it gets sticky, but I'm saying it doesn't get. Uh, how do you say? It doesn't overheat. So it, it has like a cooling element, basically. Hands remove the protective film. Then we're going to mount the SSD to the heat sink. And that's it. We've successfully attached the heat sink. Now we're going to place the spacer to the correct size of our SSD. Then install the SSD into the terminal. You want to approach it at an angle and lift slightly upwards on the connecting end, and it should connect. and then screw it down. Now we're going to reinstall the expansion slot cover, the side plate, and then the stand. All right, basically everything back where it was. And uh, I think he's gonna show, you, show us when so he turned it on. PS5 is back assembled and connected. Let's go ahead and power it on. And as you can see, the okay. PS5 has successfully protected the So this is the screen that you're going to see when you first install your um, internal drive. It should say that, uh, you know, you have to format it, and any information on it obviously will be deleted. Usually it doesn't come with any information on it, so it doesn't matter, but basically it's going to format it so that it can be used with your PS PlayStation 5. It's going to take a minute. You're going to, you know, restart and turn on your PS5 a couple times, and then you'll be good to go. All right? Now, uh, there are external storages, again, that are really good. The WD Black P50 is, again, the best one if you want to keep your PlayStation 4 games in your, uh, uh, with your, place. if you want to play PlayStation 4 games on your PlayStation 5, you can play them directly from your P50 WD Black or any other external hard drive that runs just as smooth. If you want to run PlayStation 5 games and store PlayStation 5 games um, and you need more storage for your PlayStation 5 games, then it would, I would say, get the uh, internal SSD from the WD, Western Digital Black. So, that's the only two differences between the storages. One lets you run PlayStation 5 games from them. The other one doesn't. They both let you store games on them, obviously. And again, you can store PlayStation 5 games on an external hard drive like the Western Digital Black one, but you cannot run them from there. So what a lot of people do, because again, this is a cheaper option, you can uh, download a PlayStation 5 game, um, let's say a new game that you want to play, and an old one that you've already played. So let's say I have Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I played it, I'm done with it. Uh, for now, I put my save and all that stuff uh, it's basically the game I digitally downloaded it or whatever I save it all onto my external hard drive here I'm not going to play it because I can't play it from my external hard drive but I saved it onto there so that I have free space on my PlayStation so that I can then download another game and play it directly from my PlayStation 5 because it's a PlayStation 5 game like Ratchet and Clank or something like that so basically that's how you can play around with storage what each storage means and how expensive they are <laughs> so again uh this one again i would recommend as the best one you can get it again in different varieties there's one terabyte two terabytes four terabytes if you really need that much space 500 gigabytes and that's really external one and then for the um internal one they have uh, 500 gigabytes one terabyte and two terabytes and again with the heatsink is the one that i would recommend so that you don't have to do the extra step of finding a heatsink that's compatible and then you know, basically putting it together to then put it in your PlayStation. If it comes all together, it's a lot better. All right. Now, and again, my recommendation is not to get a heat sink. Oh, sorry, not to get a, an internal hard drive yet, unless you really have a lot of PlayStation 5 games, which, again, I doubt. But that is my recommendation. Maybe in, like, two years, there might be enough PlayStation 5 games to justify getting an internal SSD because, you know, the space is actually needed. But for right now, I don't think it's that necessary um, for most for most people. I'm gonna say for most people because I know a lot of people play you know shooting games and RPGs and every day or every month there's like an expansion or an extra pack that has to be downloaded or whatever and you do need storage. But for most people, general you know uh, regular everyday players, you're not you're not really gonna need it right right this second. 
Um, and hopefully in two years, it'll be cheaper. <laughs> all right, that's all. Hope you found this useless skill useful. Hit that like, subscribe for more content like this, and I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Later.